we're talking a little bit with Brenda Disher, Vice President Senior of Strategy and Market at Sims Digital Industries Software. Brenda, it's a really pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. My pleasure. It is wonderful to be here with you. Brenda, how is Siemens position itself to drive innovation in industry in these days? So I would say the positioning that we think is really valuable to our customers is a combination of what we do with our most comprehensive digital twin, which is a digital representation of the product or the plant or the factory that our customers build. And we believe with all of the technology that we have, we can give customers the most competent way of representing their product or their plant in a digital environment. So that's one. Number two is with all the data that is currently sitting in the ecosystem or the data about implementation or the as built or the as designed for a product, we have all that information. And through AI, we can help our customers do life cycle intelligence and understand things about their product in its life cycle. And third, we're really driving a more software defined world. Everything we touch now has software in it. And so we are doing a lot of things to enable adaptive production, adaptive manufacturing, and adaptive design. Amazing. And what are the biggest challenges in adopting digital technology? Uh, so the biggest challenges first are, I think, understanding if I have the processes that I have today and I digitize those processes, I'm just going to go faster to the same result. What I have to think about is re-engineering the process. A lot of times it's culture. It's changing the culture of the company. And other times it's actually rethinking the, the, the information and how the information flows. We call that a digital thread. And the more I think about what is the outcome for my company and I re-engineer the design of that digital thread and implement new processes with digital transformation, I can really make a difference. How is Siemens promoting diversity in the technology and engineer sector? Yeah, so I would say the thing that's important about us is diversity is really for diversity of thought. And I think the more inclusive you are in bringing in different viewpoints, you get a better result, you get a better product, you get a product that has more consumers that will want it. So for me, diversity is really about including many different viewpoints, many different styles, many different gender, genders, many different nationalities. The more I can be diverse, even in my own organization, the more we're inclusive of many different ways of thinking, many different innovations, and we actually produce better products for different types of customers. So diversity is very important. Yes, definitely. And uh, which emerging technology do you believe it will have the greatest impact on the industry in coming years? Wow, so I couldn't do an interview without talking about AI. <laughs> So I believe AI is going to have a huge impact, and I don't think yet engineers are embracing AI. And I think that's because all of us are using AI in our personal life. I ask my phone to tell me where's the closest restaurant for the kind of food that I want tonight. And if I ask AI today because of the way the large language models work, I maybe get three different answers because it's not very, um, it's not highly reliable data yet. And so I think for engineers to really embrace AI, which I think is one of the most important technologies, we have to get to reliable, confident answers by training models better. And that's what we're working on at Siemens, which then I think AI will be hugely valuable inside of manufacturing, inside of product development, and even inside of the supply chain. Okay. And the industrial metaverse is being recognized as a major catalyst for digital transformation. How do you set its revolution in the next few years? And what are the challenges in the implementing on a large scale? Great question. Wow. So the industrial metaverse has significant opportunity. Um, I do think being in an immersive world wearing a headset is a little bit of a different uh, interface than people are used to. But if you think about the next generation of engineers, they're gamers. They're used to everything being digital. They're used to being digitally connected. They're digitally native. And so I do think the industrial metaverse is going to allow people to immerse and collaborate in a much more global way anywhere in the world at any time. And if I think about, if anything I've learned in the last five years, especially since, God, the COVID days, right? It, the more that I can work now any from anywhere, and I can work with anyone because I can collaborate online, multiple engineers can use the metaverse to collaborate and actually see the model at the same time, 
the technology has come so far, the gaming industry has helped. Um, some of our partners, like NVIDIA, with some of the capabilities that are in the, in the, in the computers with the, with the chips, have really created the ability for me to, in real time, actually in the scene of what I'm in, I can simulate everything about a product before it's ever built. And so I think this is an enabler for things that are actually going to help this scale. And I think those things weren't so available and people weren't going to embrace it until, unfortunately, some of these things that COVID forced us to work remotely. And then we realized, okay, I can do this. And we learned new ways of working, new ways of collaborating, new ways of being more inclusive. So I think technology's come pretty far. I think our culture is more welcoming. And I think the next generation of engineers, they're going to be digitally native. My kids, they're going to only going to want to work in the metaverse. The only place they want to work is the metaverse. So it'll scale. It'll scale. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> and digital twins have been fundamental in open, optimizing industrial process. What are the main advices in this area right now? Oh, the main advices in digital twins. So I think, again, we at Siemens really believe the digital twin is only as good as its ability to confidently predict what's happening in the real world. And so we have invested a lot in making sure that we have the most robust um, types of data that can be stored in the digital twin. So things from mechanical information, simulation information, manufacturing information. So all the domains, electronics, semiconductors, we made sure the breadth of what we do is really important. The other thing I think is important about the digital twin is it needs to be able to be a closed loop digital twin. And by closed loop, I mean I build a digital twin to represent a product. What's really important is that as data is happening in the real world, when that physical product is produced, how do I bring that data back in to my current digital environment and use it to create iterations or, it, or make evolutions of my product to improve it based on how it's operating in the real world? So I think the digital twin is, first off, has to have as many domains in it as possible so it can confidently predict the real world. And I think people need to understand an executable digital twin, which is about a closed loop, by using real data in the real world to make the digital better, which is a complete round trip of a product. Super cool. Super cool. Oh, this intersection between the metaverse and the sustainability has been a relevant topic. How can this technology contribute to reducing waste and creating more efficient and collaborative work environments? So yeah, so the digital twin by its nature has an amazing benefit and payoff in the area of sustainability. So number one, I can have my customers in an immersive environment with me working on the digital twin, and I can get real-time feedback before I ever produce a product. So I don't have to manufacture anything. Number two, it is really, really difficult in some industries. I think what my favorite example is autonomous vehicles. And I just got a new car that autonomously drive. A little scary at first, but I know the technology is good because I know the <laughs> company that behind some of it, and so I trust the technology. But you could not drive the millions of miles needed in the different conditions in the real world to actually create what is needed to make the best digital twin. You need to be able to do that in the digital world. And so that allowed us to not use up any resources in the physical world in order to simulate any possible road condition. And so that has a, a huge sustainable outcome. Um, I think the other one that's really important is so many people don't realize that I can simulate not only the design but the manufacturing, and I can actually simulate asset and performance at the end of the life cycle of a product digitally, which again allows me to make predictions and add more information in design. And the more people don't realize, 80% of a product's cost once the product is out in the field happens because of poor design information. And so in the digital world, if I can actually take the time to design in all of that information, it's a huge benefit to sustainable outcomes. Saves me, I don't have to do as many physical prototypes, I don't have to do as much manufacturing cost, maybe it saves me on material choices, but most importantly, I can get the customer or the customer's customer in my immersive world to understand their requirements earlier and build products that I don't have to iterate on over and over again, saving me huge time and cost on the manufacturing side. With the advancement of argument and virtual reality, do you believe these technologies will redefine how professionals interact with industrial systems and make extra tech decisions? Ah, so I think um, for certain industries, 
people are going to grab a hold of some of these technologies and embrace them quicker than others. And I actually see now some of our smaller customers, the small to mediums and startups, they're actually embracing technology much faster than our larger enterprise customers when it comes to some of these immersive things and some of these new technologies. Because our small customers, they actually have just as complicated products but they're willing to forego the complicated processes to use the technologies to make those strategic decisions. And so I think people are gonna embrace these things at a much faster rate. I think a lot of this will make its way to our enterprise customers over time. They're actually you know, looking at it from different angles. So everybody's investing in technology and digital transformation. So the willingness to drive change, I see it a lot quicker as, as, as I see some of our startups. But to me, it's definitely gonna help with strategic decisions. And I do think people are gonna embrace some of the new ways of working if they can see the payoff in time to market, in better innovation and invention, and in their ability to actually be first to market when it comes to competitive advantage. So if a customer can use the technology in order to get faster, better, more cost effective products out, they will embrace these technologies very quickly. So it's really about getting those benefits and being able to embrace the technologies. Thank you so much, Brenda. I appreciate a lot. This is very helpful for us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.